We're looking at the day word, and I really believe it's applicable for the church. When we look at circumstances around us, my brother, my sister, Ukraine, Russia, and whatever is going on in the world, and people sending missiles and this and this, and many people talking about Third World War. There's a lot of people that can ask, where's God? Or where's the God of love? And in the day word, I'm talking about Ecclesiastes. We have a man saying, everything is meaningless. Everything is meaningless. To kill, to slaughter 20, 30 million people in the First World War and the Second World War. Again, how meaningless. Why six million Jews in gas chambers and, and the German people will say today, how meaningless. What were we thinking? What happened? And then the, the biggest issue of, that I want to challenge you with today is your heart. We look at a man, he had all the wisdom and he wrote Solomon. The book Proverbs. He had all the money, he had all the wealth, and the world came to see all his wealth. He had a woman, a thousand. And, uh, and at the end of the day, he's not saying, I had no wisdom. He's saying, I don't understand anything. Hello? And then the question is his heart linked with his understanding? No. His heart is protected in wisdom. But many times we, my heart is only settled if I understand. And many times my heart will only be settled if I sorted out something with somebody uh, where I understand what happened. And my heart is in trouble or in bitterness or in judgment or negative or this or that or that or that if I don't understand. Why did this happen? Why did that happen? Oh, for this reason. And suddenly my heart is okay. It's not supposed to be like that. My heart's supposed to be in a place, safe, secure, clean, precious, in a place, even though I don't understand. How can this man talk 10, 20, 30 times saying everything is meaningless, but still his heart is with God. So if you can walk out here and you can remember to separate the two, and the, that the condition of your heart is not based on if you understand what happened and why it happened or not. Are you with me? So we're going to look at a few points. Please, if you can write down. Please, if you can write down, that will be awesome. That you will go and look, even if you mark it in your Bibles, just, uh, just write on a few things of what are you supposed to do with your heart. We say in principle, you need to guard your heart and because from your heart is the springs of life. Everything originates from your heart. But what is this man doing with his heart in the midst of this book where he's explaining all the things happening where he says i've seen the righteous i've seen the righteous I've seen the man walking with god who fears god has respect for god and he's destroyed and the guy that the ungodly and he's flourishing everything is meaningless but still, he has the, the wisdom, he has the breakthrough that even though he cannot understand, how the child asking his mother or his granny say, we prayed, grandma, we prayed. And mom, dad, grandpa, my brother, all gone with the missiles and boom, blasted into pieces. And we prayed. And, and our neighbors, that uncle, that auntie, they didn't pray. They used Jesus' name as a swear word. 
They are okay, and we're not okay. Where is this God? Give me the answer that we must send that grandma to give to the little boy. Are you with me? It's not about, God, how will I understand what's happening and what's not happening? I cannot lose my heart. And we pray that people will not turn their hearts against God. Because they don't understand what's happening. You're with me. May God help you. May God help me. That we will not, in something like this, somebody speaking behind your back or said something wrong or hurt you. And, and based on that, your heart is in a bad state. Why you flirt with your heart all over the place and throw it for whatever circumstance come your way. That your heart must be, the, the state of your heart is determined by whatever happening around you. Your heart is too precious for that. But your heart that is the palace for the king to come and sit on his throne. And not you on your own throne. But him on his throne and the beauty of his presence. The beauty of his authority. His final say in your life coming forth from your heart. How can that happen? We know your body has a heart. Doof, 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 doof. Hey, you know that. But then there's the, the, the trouble with the trouble, the challenge. That the enemy wants your heart, that you will put your heart in your soul and not link it with your spirit, but link it with your soul. Because your heart in your, in your spirit, as you are a new creation, everything is perfect in your spirit. Because you are a spirit, that's why you're not a baboon. You couldn't come from a baboon. All those rubbish that they try to teach the kids. But because you have a spirit, because God as spirit breathed his breath in you. He didn't do that with an animal. That's because you are, have a spirit and you are a spirit. That's why you're a human being. And in your spirit, everything became new. 2 Corinthians 5, everything God made perfect in your spirit. And that's why the word says we have the mind of Christ. Where? In your spirit. You have the mind of Christ, amplifies this, and you do hold the thoughts, the feelings, and the purposes of God in your spirit. So if you can link your heart, your personality, and what it all is about with your spirit, that's the best place. You link, you link your heart with perfection, with the beauty of God that's in your spirit. But if you link it with your soul, then it is in covenant, uh, faithful to your feelings. Your heart is good, when you feel good, your heart is good, in your soul is your intellect, if, if everything is sorted out, if you understand everything. But your heart will you up, down, this, there, there, all over the place, thrown through for the enemy, filthy, a lot of rubbish in it, if it's linked, first of all, with my soul, because in my soul there's the battle. There's the battle where I must take the thoughts captive and we must say, break down the strongholds. I must walk with this. I must deal with this in my soul. Link your heart in a secure place where there's the peace beyond all understanding because of what is happening in your soul. How can you have peace? Because your heart is linked in a place of perfection with your spirit. Amen. Holy, the world cannot touch your spirit. Make sure that your heart is linked with your spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. So what must you do with your heart? First point. I've set my heart to seek wisdom. This is chapter 1, verse 13 and 17. I've set my heart. The other translation is I've applied my heart. I've set my heart. So you with your heart. If you say God, your heart, what on earth does it mean? One of the facets. We're going to write down a few facets. Is I choose to set my heart to seek wisdom. So I focus with my heart. Your soul, your emotions can focus on, oh, somebody going to hurt me again. Your intellect on the opinions of people and, and what you stand for, what you don't stand for. But you're not going to put your heart in everything. That's where the people say, don't take it personally. Yeah, a lot of stuff is very personal. How you can get hurt, disappointed. A lot of things can be very personal. But how will you have the capacity when somebody is really nasty with you not to take it personal? Only if your heart is first linked with God's heart, 
through your spirit. Then you're in a safe place. Your security, your value, your acceptance, your, your stature is first determined by what heaven is saying about you. Amen. Let that be so. Set your heart to seek wisdom. Set your heart to God alone. Put your heart in that place that my heart will seek. My heart will seek. You know, group pressure? No. You will like it to smoke or use the drugs or drink or this or that. You will be okay with, you will laugh, you will enjoy a sick joke. But it is the guys around, not, not, not one of you guys, but that can push you into that place to set your heart towards that and to decide this is good. And very successful principle because the principle is from God. The enemy is using the principle, or you can decide with the Holy Spirit, I will set my heart on that what is from God. Your feelings is, I don't want to read the Bible now. And you put your heart into that place, so I will not read the Bible. I will not get into the Word. I don't feel like really singing. You know, I'm getting excited about that song, that song, that song, that song. But when we sing unto the Lord, what happens then? It all depends where you have set your heart. To link with what? No, you need to be honest with yourself. You don't feel this. So what? That's in your soul. You don't feel that. You don't feel like singing. You don't feel like reading the word. You don't feel like it, it's working. Don't throw your, your heart into that. Into your feelings. That's in your soul. Your heart. The most valuable. The one that you must treasure the most. That you must guard the most. Make sure it's in the beauty of your spirit. And from that place you live. You set your heart to seek wisdom. Even though around you, you want to say meaningless, meaningless, what a waste. I wanted to say what a hell of a waste. You see all around you. Well, what does it help to pray? See what happened to many Christians there. And what I mean, the world wars and with many wars, so many people just destroyed. That served the Lord. So what a waste to serve him if my heart is not right. But this man said, Ivan, I don't understand. My heart will be set to seek wisdom. Your heart is protected by the wisdom. If you have wisdom, the wisdom will protect your heart even though you don't understand. We're talking about a peace that will guard your heart and your mind and it will a peace beyond all understanding. That means, that's in Philippians 4 verse 6, eh? And verse 7. It's a peace beyond all understanding because you don't understand what is happening, but you have this capacity. What the world does not have, you have this capacity to have a peace, to have beauty in your heart because your heart is linked with a reborn spirit. Hello. That's even, you feel in your soul, how on earth can you have peace? Because your heart is set with what has God, God has done in your spirit, not with what is happening in your soul. Are you with me? Hello. Amen. I've set my heart to seek wisdom. Second point. I said in my heart. This is verse 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 1 and 15. And chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. What did I say? Chapter 3. Yeah, chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. What will I say there? I said to myself, and he said to himself in his heart, he said to himself in his heart, there will be a time for everything, a time for for everything. So therefore I need to be patient. That's one of the examples. He said to himself in his heart. Now you can have thoughts in your heart. And the thoughts can be rubbish. Where you need to address the thoughts. But the thought is not that you said something in your heart. When you say something. When you give that thought a voice in your heart. You are giving it authority. 
So you think about certain things more and more and more and more and more. It will become a voice. And the voice will become louder than what what you go through louder than what God is saying, louder than we will sit here and if the, you allowed frustration and whatever your, your feelings you're going through, you gave your feelings a voice, then you don't feel, you feel frustrated, you feel bored, you feel this. That voice will be louder than the voice of the Word. It will be louder than whatever the Holy Spirit would want to say to you because you've positioned your life in such a way. But God wants a certain voice in your heart. And there's certain things that you will put in your heart. There's certain things that you will say in your heart. There's other things you will not. So the enemy can say some things, some stuff in your heart, but you will not give it a voice. You'll give it a flat ignore. You will humiliate the rubbish. Humiliate the voice of darkness. Humiliate the voice of the devil. Humiliate the voice of the flesh. And honor only the words of God, the voice of God. And give what he is saying, give utterance, give voice to that. And I'm saying, of, you can hear what God is saying in your heart. He said to himself in his heart, may the voice in your heart be beautiful. Because you can smile at somebody and hey, 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 and do this and say that. But in your heart, there's a voice to say, what the, this guy, you know, this and that and that. And you, you can, and that voice can be louder at that moment than any other voice. The voice of depression and voice of negativity. And you can, you will find yourself when you hear the word and suddenly all oh, these other these other voices are speaking to you as if interrupting that person that's speaking. Anybody who experienced that before? Even this one Satanist that I prayed for, I, I said to him, you, you need to accept Christ and do this and God loves you and da, 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 da. He stopped me in the middle. She says, I mustn't listen to you. That was the demonic uh, guide and the demonic rubbish inside of him. He just stopped me and said, she says, I mustn't listen to you. And I just said, well, you must decide if you want to listen to the Spirit of God through me or to the devil from hell that's living in you now. And when he surrendered, okay, then the demon came out with a, quite a scene, but, but he was set free. My brother, my sister, you will see when you read the word what voices will come up. And that will tell you if you can read the word and spend time with the word and and pray and go with it even over an hour can you believe it more than an hour praying and you push with that you will find that certain voices will come up and it's things that you gave a voice to in your heart that you need to tune that you need to kill that you need to say sorry i will not honor that voice I will not honor that voice. You're with me? Let's say, I will not honor that voice. I will honor the voice of God. Okay, number three. I saw with my heart. Okay, I set my heart to seek certain things. I set in my heart. Number three, I saw with my heart. 1 verse 16. I saw with my heart. Look. I have increased in wisdom, blah, 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 and all that have done this, I, let me stop there. You will have a certain perspective in, from your heart. You live according to certain perspectives, but a lot of that is from your heart. When you walk in rejection, and you've honored the voice of rejection, and it became a voice in you, doesn't matter what people say, you will find the rejection in, that, in whatever. Whatever that person does, you will somewhere get hurt or feel hurt. You will somewhere feel rejected. Because that reject, the rejection that you gave a voice to in your heart will have the final say. So you will hear what the person is saying. You will hear what the word is saying. But at the end, rejection will have the final say in your heart. <sighs> Number four. 
You set your heart on God and on the word for wisdom. You make sure that you get into the word in such a way that it becomes a voice in your heart. And then in that place, with that voice, you will be able to see. Remember what Habakkuk 2, what Habakkuk said? I see what you are saying. You can hear what somebody is saying, but somewhere you must see what the person is saying. But if you are speaking, I hear what you are saying, but there's a voice of rejection in me, and what I see through even whatever you said, what I see is, I'm rubbish. I don't make it when I look at you. And then I feel discouraged and I feel whatever. So the voice that you will honor the most, that you will cherish the most in your heart, that voice coming through the word, through the word, through the word, through the thoughts that you uh, apply more and more and more. You keep on thinking on certain things. In that context, you will have a certain insight. A certain guy will see the opportunity that the devil will give him, give him because he allowed that, those words of that temptation and the words of the flesh to to give him a certain insight. You need to walk out with insight. And I'm not talking about understanding everything. Are you with me? Insight of knowing, I can see what God is saying. Like let's say Joshua, you can see God is saying we must walk around the city. He cannot understand that because he's absolutely ridiculous. To walk around the city and, uh, you know, here we go and sing a few songs and then do some, uh, some worship. And, and then the enemy, we're going to slaughter the enemy. We, we're going to win. How on earth can that happen? But if the voice of God is here in my, in my heart and I've set my heart to God's wisdom. Wisdom is to obey God. One of the first things. Wisdom is to obey God. Why? In Proverbs, a lot is saying wisdom and the fear of God. And the fear of God is the principle of wisdom. You start with the fear of God. What does it mean? With wisdom, it means I start with respecting Him. If you have wisdom, the first thing you, they, that's in your life is you have respect for God. And you have respect for His word. Then you're a wise man. You're a wise woman. A fool that wants to understand everything. Before he will give respect. Because when I need to understand first, I must first argue with you. There must first be an argument. There must first be this discussion before I will okay you as yes. I understand, therefore I will trust you. I must first put you to the test. What level of arrogance. But wisdom is, I choose to respect him. D.L. Moody said, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Even it seems to be ridiculous. If you not understand that, you will enter the kingdom as a child. Because of a sincere, innocent faith. Sincerity, the genuineness, the innocence is laying in, in, in a place of like a little child, just trusting his dad. God wants that beauty to be displayed through you, through your heart. But he has given you all the resources to have that beautiful heart. He has given you all the resources for that in your spirit. Just open up the word. Holy Spirit will confirm the word in your spirit. And from that place, put it in your heart. And then with that, you can face your soul with the emotions up and down, with the intellect not understanding a lot of stuff, with the will that you feel <coughs> that you feel you could be stubborn. Only two of you maybe. But you're with me? Hallelujah. Okay. That's number three. I saw inside. Number four. I searched in my heart. I searched in my heart and it has to do let's say Two verse, two verse five. I can do, maybe I must wear some glasses, you know. 
Maybe that can help. Okay. Okay, bottom line. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I searched in my heart. It has to do in the Afrikaans talking about I get nachdenk. I I put the thoughts in there, and then I, with the thoughts, I'm trying to search. I'm trying to figure out what is happening. Now, I, that I search. I want to say is you make that those thoughts, you make it a a light. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. But I can choose that the light and the lamp in me is based on bitterness, distrust, is based on my flesh so that says, I'm right, you're wrong. It's based on a thing of where I have my own issues. And the the light of your in the light of your issues, you will see stuff. And your heart, the torch, the light, looking is based on issues. I'm looking with issues in my heart at the situation, at people, at my destiny, at me and God, at me at, and faith, me and my circumstances. I need to get that right. I'm talking about how could this man, Solomon, have such an excellent perspective in what he had to do with his heart. Are you with me? At the end of the book of Ecclesiastes, remember? Where he says, 12 verse 13, the end of everything, the main thing that God has for you. Let me quickly read one. You're supposed to know that from your heart. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Let's say conclusion of the matter. Oh, let's try that again. Conclusion of the matter. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the duty of all mankind. This is your duty, this is your main work, your main calling, your main duty on earth. What is expected of you, if you believe you are living today and you're not dead, if you're alive today, you have one main duty. First of all, Fear God. That's in the context, not like the devil run away, but it's in the context of have respect for him. Honor him, respect him. If you understand him or not, you choose to honor him. Or I choose to honor my feeling, my tantrum, my hurt. What people did to me in the past. I will honor that, I will respect that more than God. Or, in spite of what I feel, in spite of what I'm going through, in spite of my understanding, I will respect my God. I will honor him. That's a man with wisdom. With what you will do will not be meaningless. It will not be vanity. It will not be rubbish. But if you live from that place of respect and the fear of God, that you will honor him, with that goes, obey my commandments. If you respect God and if you fear him, you will obey his commandments. Because between obedience and respect, there will not be an argument. There will not be a tantrum. There will not be a, 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 even a main discussion about it before you will obey. It's just linked with one another with nothing in between. I respect God and I obey. It's linked with one another. But if there's all this other stuff is in between with reasoning and this and I don't know. Blah, 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 blah. Respect and obedience not linked. But it's supposed to be linked like two sides of a coin. You're with me? May God help us. Amen. We're at number four, number five. I let my heart be guided by wisdom. I let my heart be guided by wisdom. I saw that wisdom is better than folly, just as light is better than darkness. And he says in the... In the New King James. Sorry, I'm reading from an NIV. That's why. In the New King James, he said, I let my heart, no, I let my heart be guided by wisdom. Chapter 2, verse 3. Chapter 2, verse 3. Are you there? 
Okay. With that, at the end of the day, wisdom will protect you, my brother, my sister. Wisdom will protect you. Are you here? Wisdom will protect you against the wrong choices. Not the understanding of everything will protect your heart. So cut that covenant with, when I understand everything, my heart is okay. It's not about understanding everything. So let your heart be protected by wisdom. You're with me? Okay, and be guided by wisdom. Number six, I let my heart rejoice and delight in my labor. I let my heart rejoice and delight in my labor. Last part of verse 10. My heart took delight in all my labor. New King James, my heart rejoices in rejoice in my labor. That means at the end of the day, what father or mother is there when you see your child is suffering and he's enjoying nothing and he's just a, one major struggle. Oh, the father is so blessed by it. What kind of father is that? Father God wants you to enjoy life. He wants you to enjoy life. And the work that he has given you, he wants you to enjoy it. Why is there then such a struggle? If I'm struggling in my soul, I put my heart in my soul, and I try to figure out that my emotions must be stable, then my heart is okay. My intellect, the thought patterns cannot be all over the place. I cannot have a fight with people in my mind. Otherwise, my, my heart is in trouble. I cannot enjoy life. I cannot enjoy life. But if you can set this in order, follow these patterns that we see with this man, with this one book, where it's written over this book, in the midst of confusion, of things that are meaningless, of things that you don't understand, do the following with your heart. As you study this book, let it be so, in Jesus' name. No, but you want to, in your job, you want to kill your boss. You want to slaughter him, or whatever, whatever, whatever. It starts with, let your heart rejoice and delight in your labor. It starts with doing it as if unto the Lord, not for the boss. Not because all the circumstances are going to be great. You do it for the Lord. And when you do it for the Lord, and you see it as a privilege to do it for Him, then it's already a, a place to begin to understand how to rejoice. How to enjoy the opportunity that when they do that wrong to you, you have the privilege to show the Father's heart and do it as if unto the Lord, what you do. And in that place, rejoicing will always be possible. It will always be possible. Hello. But this is not right, and that is not right, and that's they do wrong, and that they do wrong, and he's not appreciating. Nobody said thank you to me. They're using me as a doormat and walk over me, and this and this and this. Okay. It's okay. Honor that. Don't honor God. Because if you honor God, you will have to obey God and show love and forgiveness and joy and kindness and all those stuff that your flesh don't like. Are you with me? So God will put you in situations because he believes you will make the right choices so that you can come closer to him. The more you come into situations where you choose to do it as if unto the Lord, the closer you come to God for quality relationship. Not fake. Not fake relating. Not fake prayer. Not fake declaration. But therefore, as long as when you're feeling depressed, if, as long as you're in a place where you feel you fail, I fail, I fail, I fail, but still I will rejoice, I will rejoice, I will rejoice, I will do this for God. And I make that choice the whole time because I set my heart in this direction to rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Especially when I want to feel I'm drowning in the negativity. I'm drowning in depression. Drowning in anxiety or frustration or in circumstances that does not work out. More than you push your heart in the right direction. With the right thoughts. With what you will say. With what, how you will set your heart. Hello. Well, you say, God, protect my heart with your wisdom. And the wisdom, hello, of God seems like, the word says, foolishness if you don't sometimes experience a foolishness for what you want to do with god if you never experience a foolishness you have confirmation that you don't walk in god's wisdom 
But if you will walk in God's wisdom, you will have some voices that tell you, this is foolishness. Are you with me? <sighs> because the enemy will not want you to walk in God's wisdom. Okay. That was number? Number seven. I give my heart to, now, in the one translation, it says despair. I give my heart to despair. 2 verse 20. So my heart began to despair over all the toilsome labor under the sun. Despair. I, my heart, I gave my heart over to it. The other translation is saying, I give my heart to the negativity, to the depression, or to the discouragement. What is it saying? It's saying you can make the choice. You choose to, to give your heart over to that. Or... You choose to give your heart over to the peace of God. You give your heart in the hands of God. You give your heart and you put your heart into God's love. That will be your driving force. Not this anger to be your driving force. You put your heart into that place. You don't put your heart in a rubbish bin. In a lot of rubbish. Why? Because the way, that's the way the flesh is. It's supposed to happen. You're supposed to get fed up. And then just say whatever you want to. No. No. Uh -uh. Everybody say, uh-uh. Okay. Number eight. I toil. I push forward with the striving of the heart. That's 2 verse 22. 2 verse 22. I'm not going to read it now. Uh, 2 verse 22. But what is happening? You push forward with the striving of the heart. So what is burning in here in my heart you're gonna push with that i i have this thing there must be enough finances for my children because i suffered with a lot of stuff if they have if they have finances and a certain education they will have a future so i push forward with the striving that's in my heart that they must have enough is that what god has said to you what you need to do now find out what is driving you what is the striving in your heart because it says it will destroy you it will put it will empty you from every form of energy that is from god what is the striving in your heart because you will give yourself to the striving in your heart it's the way you were made but if the striving in your heart is the love that compels the joy as strength the, the peace as guidance if it's god god is the driving force in you that's the heart of heaven, is the force in you, is the, is the striving, it's the driving force inside of you. You will go from strength to tiredness. No, strength to strength. From glory to glory. From beauty to more beauty, to more beauty in your life, to more beauty in your life, to more beauty in your life, because it's from God. Less of you, more of Him. But I need to make that decision. And in that place, it's not, first of all, with other people, yeah. The battle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against the evil forces in the air. Ephesians 6. But in my own life, it is to get my heart in the right place. Because if my heart is in the right place, the enemy cannot have a fight with me. So get yourself in that place and there will not be such a lot of fights in your heart and your mind and your emotions. And, and with people, that whatever they do, somewhere I'm going to become sensitive, oversensitive about what they do and what they don't do. Because each one of us got disappointed or hurt by something in our lives. But God wants us not to be the product of that. He has, he has a desire for you to enjoy life and enjoy what you're doing. Now that doesn't mean quit the job because you don't enjoy it. That means you need to find out from God why are you not enjoying what you're doing. Don't quit on it. But ask God, where is something not connecting with something in the right way for me to enjoy life? Amen. God going to help us. Number nine. Let your heart not utter anything hastily before God. Is that number... 
I push forward with the striving. Number nine, let your heart not utter anything hastily. Is that five verse twelve or verse one? Phew, I must write better. Okay. Guard your steps when you go to the house of the Lord. He says, when you come, when we come together, let's come with respect. Are you with me? Like we always say, you can learn here, just going through the motions of a song, and you, you can learn here through just wara wara through the song, your thoughts in other places. When you hear the word, your thoughts in different places. And you can learn your, how not to have respect for God when you hear the word. So you can walk out here with less respect for God and his word than what you had when you enter this place. Because you choose, you make decisions as you sit here. When, you, when we sing unto the Lord and when we read the word you alone or in a cell group or two friends or here, you make the decision that there will be more respect for him or if I just leave it, it will automatically go into decay. It will just wara, wara, wara away. Your choice. May God help us. In Jesus' name. Go near to listen rather to offer the sacrifice of fools. Why do you know what is wrong? Do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. Okay, a wise man will first wait and not just speak. A fool. Proverbs. Many verses. He will just say whenever he wants to, whatever he wants to. That's a fool. But it comes from the heart, where you allow your heart to say, to think, whatever it wants to. Guard your heart means you will not allow any rubbish thing to speak in your heart, because your heart is not some other chamors place for every to come in there and have something to say. Hello? No. In the palace, there's certain protocol. In the temple of the Holy Spirit, your body, there's a certain protocol because of a certain respect that you have for God. So God means there's some guards there at the doors that anyone cannot just enter and do what, what, wara, 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 all around here in the king's palace. Hello? So God, your heart means... Like in that palace, there's gods and will not allow, pew, unless the king said yes. But if the king, if you decided the king does not have the final say, whatever rubbish can enter, can enter. And you fire the gods, and then you can go. No conscience that's developed through the word. No conscience developed through the voice of the Holy Spirit and his presence. No conscience based on the character and the integrity that God has built in your life. And you decide you're going to ignore that. But praise God for his mercy. That when we clean out our hearts, clean out the place, clean out the palace. If I call on God for the guards at the gates, it will be there. God will be there in his mercy. And help us to keep our hearts beautiful and protected. Let's say, I can have such an awesome, beautiful heart. Yeah. Where God desires to commune with, with the quality and the voice, your voice that's reflected through your heart. Yeah, amen. Okay. Good. That's number nine. Number ten. We're going nearly for a landing. Allow God to keep you busy, occupied. <laughs> Uh, does that sound good? Allow God to keep you busy. <laughs> it says, 5 verse 20. They seldom reflect on the days of their lives. They don't, seldom have the worry about their life. Because God keeps them occupied. New King James, busy. God keeps them occupied, busy, with gladness of heart. Gladness of heart. God wants to keep you busy to enjoy life. That your busyness is in, to enjoy life. You find people, they're finding energy through what they do. Energy through their job. 
energy. Uh, when you go on a holiday, you try to find something that you will enjoy so that you can come back, and through that enjoyment, you are energized even. Spending time with God is supposed to be something that I enjoy. Then I come out of that place energized. You don't see that in that way. You go into time with God with a lot of other voices. You come out feeling condemned, feeling, oh, live a what am I supposed to do? And I don't get right what I'm doing. And I feel I got the spanking from the Lord. And after the spanking, discipline doesn't seem to be pleasant. Uh, according to Hebrews 12. Huh. But if I can set my heart to understand, I choose what I will enjoy and what I will not enjoy. That's your choice. You with me? But may God help you because his will for you, his dream for you is to enjoy life. And that what he keeps you occupied with is he wants you to enjoy that. So he an has an agenda for you to enjoy. Even if it's James 1. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials and circumstances and all that. Count it joy. Choose. You can choose to go through it with joy that is your choice but if you only learn how to say yeah with the soccer ball or with the rugby ball and when we read the word you say yeah, yeah. and you can smell the death maybe it's the death of flesh what about that that's maybe okay hey smile to your neighbor and say enjoy <laughs> okay, you with me? Hello? Lord, have mercy. Okay, number 11. Keep, the other translations say, banish anxiety from the heart. Other one says, sorrow. Keep the anxiety and the sorrow from your heart. Banish it. Anybody? Think how banished would look. I will deal with the anxiety. Yeah. I feel really anxious. And let's just, with this anxiety, we must deal with it so that I don't feel anxious anymore. Everybody say, ah, ah. that's why you deal with anxiety. The word says, banish it out of your life. When you start to feel anxious, it's nearly like getting aggressive against it. Chase it out. Chase the anxiety out. So it doesn't, it sounds like the same as anxiety and stress. And that, as if anxiety and stress and all those that Come with a determination against that anxiety. Banish it out of your life. Let's say banish. Okay. Okay. Let's do that. Number 12. A bribe or a present corrupts the heart. That's 7 verse 7. You know, when you get something, we can feel, yeah, the heart is settled. With my heart, I'm trusting God with my heart. I'm trusting God with my heart. I'm going through the battles of trusting the Lord and this with my heart. And when I get the present, when I get the, I call it the breakthrough, and you have a certain present that you receive, be careful. Be careful. It corrupts. It can corrupt. It can bring the corruption in you. The things that you can get can corrupt you. God said, okay, if you are so into Canaan, that not the devil, but God wants to give you. If you are so into Canaan, well, that corruption you can go, but I'm not going with you. I'm not going with you. So when Moses did intercession, he prayed. and He said, God, but you promised us Canaan. God said, okay. I give you the promise, go to Canaan, but I'm not coming with. Hello? The present that even God can give you, can corrupt you in such a way that God says, you can go with my blessing, but not with my presence. Let's say, God, I want to go with your presence. Not first with a blessing. Follow the shepherd, goodness and mercy will follow you. But don't turn around and go for the, for the goodness and mercy. And God, come and bless me, come and bless me for the goodness and mercy. No, I follow God and goodness and mercy will seek you. 
Where are you? Where are you? I need to bless that man. I need to bless. Just get your definition of blessing accurate. Hallelujah. Number 13. It's only 17 points, but we're going to go fast. You have an expectation, eh? That's why, sorry, we were a little bit late with the first service. Can you forgive us? We will try not to make it in a habit. Don't let a voice in your heart now speak to you. I heard that voice. Sis. Okay. Number 13. You know certain things in your heart. 7 verse 22. We're not going to read it, but it's there. You know certain things in your heart. Your heart knows. You know? Your heart knows. You won't believe it, but even a dog and a, and a horse knows that. You know, these horses, they're not naughty. They are, they are Christian horses. But when the gate was open, I entered, and then the one horse came out and started to run in the, on, the, on the R700 provincial road, you know. So I got out of the car, and I mean, you can see, I, I'm, a, I'm a runner. And uh, I went for it. I, we, we would have had millions of views on YouTube. So I was taking the left lane and the horse the right lane. And we ran. I mean, <laughs> we ran why? Because from the front, a, a big truck was coming. And the horse was heading for the truck, and I'm on. The... And at one stage, I don't know why, by the grace of God, he, he basically stopped and he turned around because the, the truck was like, <laughs> you know, uh, to stop. And as I was turning around, I saw the other five horses also in the road. So this horse was running to them, you know. So I, I lost the race there. And I got into the car, but, and I realized there's another truck coming from the other side. I got into the car. I thought, what must I do now? And as I got into the car, that horse is in triple speed came past me. And into the went there and went there and down the hole and through there and there and down again. I thought, what? And I realized that other truck had to, oh, you know, that, that the tutor is doing, giving the honking. Why on earth did I tell you this story? The horse's heart, praise the Lord. The horse's heart knew immediately. Where am I right? Where am I wrong? Even the horse know that. You, you've seen that? When your dog is somewhere busy and he's, he's doing, uh, he's eating his food, and when you say, hey, and he comes to you. When the ho dog is outside the gate and you say, hey, <laughs> immediately, <laughs> the dog knows. He knows in his heart. <laughs> He's in the wrong. So, my brother, um, in your heart, you know, you know, you know what is right and what is wrong. You know what's the right thing to do. Don't bully your heart with a lot of rubbish stuff and throw the rubbish in your heart and try to, to still your conscience, sear your conscience. No, 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 don't do, don't do that. Okay? Uh, are you with me? Say, God, give me that truck that will, ah, that I will just realize I'm on the wrong road and it goes to go back into what God has for my life. Amen. Okay, number 14. Your heart is full of what? That is 8 verse 11. Hopefully in this Bible also. 8 verse 11. When the sentence for a crime is not quickly carried out, People's hearts are filled with schemes to do wrong. And they say, Oh, who say your leerigheid is the devil's work? Lady guide is the devil's, the devil's cushion. Who say is that? Laziness. You know, when you leave somebody, some, some people, you leave them on their own, they have nothing to do and whatever. What's going to brew out there? Something that's not necessarily good. Not you guys. I can, I, know, I can see you cannot even imagine something like that. But um, in any case, um, 
Hearts are filled with schemes to do wrong when the sentence for a crime is not quickly carried out. When you know this guy's in the wrong and he hurt you, but there's no justice and the justice is not happening. And certain things must be said right and he's not said right. And this guy is corrupt and or this guy can just do whatever he wants and he's just carrying on. Be careful. Boom. There you have it. That was water. Praise the Lord. Be careful what you do with your heart when you become impatient. Be careful what you do with your heart when things doesn't work out within a certain time frame that you feel it was supposed to happen within a certain time frame. Be careful what you do with your heart. Are you with me? You give your, your heart over to schemes and rubbish. No, it will not be. It cannot be and it shall not be. We are at number. Your heart is full of what? Robbies, hopefully not. 8 verse 11. Number 15. I took it, I considered it in my heart. I took it, I considered it in my heart. 9 verse 1. You make the choice. What you will take in your heart. I hear what you're saying to me, and I will take it in my heart. Ek sal het ter harte neem, sê die Afrikaans. I will take it in my heart. You make the choice. What you will put in your heart, and what you will not. Somebody really hurt you, okay, let's look at healing, but you don't have to take the hurt and all the interpretation of that hurt into your heart. You can protect your heart even against the hurt. Don't close your heart against it because then you put the bitterness and judgment and the fear of getting hurt again. You put all that rubbish, that most things coming from the demons, you put it in your heart. No, 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 not close your heart. <laughs> but choose what you, will put it, what you will put in and what will you not. Thank you, Father, you make me more than a conqueror. I will not put the defeat and the voice of defeat that I'm a rubbish and I'm a loser. I will not put that voice in my heart. I will, I'm not a loser. Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ who lives in me. Hello, hello, hello. I will stand with what God says. I will put that in my heart. I will not put that voices. that are very loud at this moment after you failed in something. Very loud voices. Don't put it in your heart. Amen. Let's say I will not. Okay. Number 15. I took it, consider it in my heart. All right, I said that. Number 16. Follow the ways of your heart. 11 verse 9. Second last one. Follow the ways of your heart. 11 verse 9. You know, at the end of the day, you're going to do that. You're going to follow the ways of your heart. So you better make sure what you put in there. You who are young. Any young people here? Oh, oh, I see. I see. Great. You who are young, be happy while you are young. Not be miserable when you are old, but be happy while you are young and let your heart give you joy in the days of your youth. Follow the ways of your heart. And whatever your eyes see, no, it's not like looking at the girl, whatever your eyes see, follow the ways of your heart. Not in that way, please. Get perspective, hey? But know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. That means you're going to be in trouble. But just remember, you're going to be in trouble. No, that's not what he is saying. Stand accountable before God. Just remember, in what you see, in how you look, and, and how you enjoy life, you must stay accountable before God in how you enjoy life. God wants you, especially when you are young even, to enjoy life. You know why? Because you bring the older people, you bring the mama and the papa and the grandpa and grandma, you bring them joy when you enjoy life with God in an accurate way. You bring those generations, you bring them joy. You with me? So live that life. Live a joyful life. That's God's promise for you. That's God's heart for you. That's God's dream for you, man. Okay, tell your neighbor, I will enjoy my life with the Lord. Okay, number 17. Last one. Do life with a joyful heart. Ah, we said that already. Okay. Follow the ways of your heart. Your heart will path away. If you can just remember that. These guys, brother, sister, mom, dad, 
blown into whatever, I don't want to say pieces there in, 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 in Ukraine. And this little kid sitting with grandma. He said, Grandma, we prayed for protection. We are following God. Why would a God of love do this to us? Hello? And for her to say, let's enjoy life. What? It sounds sick. But how will you find these principles through the book Ecclesiastes? My brother, my sister, let's push in this so that your prayer can be a quality prayer even for those guys, for what they are going through. For Ethiopia and those places where more than a million or two or three people in, in Africa are there that are sitting and dying because there's not no food. And a lot in the past of aid and focus were given with millions and millions to help a lot of these guys. Some of that focus is shifted into the war. Hello? So we pray for supernatural provision. We pray for manna and quails. We pray for water from the rock. We pray that God will just be there for them. Are you with me? To do life with a joyful heart. We, we pray that the supernatural will manifest. Remember what we said, and I know... Um, I know I must say something else because you have such a desire to sit here for another hour. But um, who knows the story? And don't lie because you want me to stop. Um, <laughs> who knows the story about uh, the kids in the mountains that prayed? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Don't say, yeah, as he's saying, don't say, talk about it, Pastor. In Afghanistan, a lot of child trafficking a lot of child trafficking, and this missionary was testifying how high in the mountains, even in the monasteries, they would, the kids that will run into the bush to flee the child trafficking because many parents are not there anymore. And uh, really, thousands. But at one stage, this one guy with a few of his uh, fellow workers with a lot of kids in the monastery, high in the mountains, a certain time, they must get wood and food before the winter, before the snow. And the snow came like a month, or I don't know how long, before the time, too early. And they were stuck in the mountains, no wood, high in the mountains with the snow, and no food. And so when it went tough, I mean, the, everybody will sleep, and then in the middle, and then the guys on the outside will come in and, to make sure everybody stay alive and some of the some of the kids when told the missionary but you taught us that that jesus prayed for the multiplication of food and and prayed for manna and quails and, that, and those stuff um let's pray for that now the missionary said oh lord what now <laughs> what are we gonna do and so the kids very excited we're gonna pray for food and tomorrow morning it's gonna be there it's gonna fall from heaven you know there will be food so they prayed the missionary said they were not very a lot of sleep that they got that evening <laughs> because of what are they gonna tell the kids tomorrow morning when there's no food and the next morning they got up and when they went outside they were 20 30 mountain goats, mountain sheep, laying there in front. So they were an avalanche up in the mountain. And a whole herd, call it a herd, of this mountain sheep, mountain goats, came down and they all fell there in front. <laughs> they were frozen. You don't need a refrigerator or anything. They were already there, you know. And the missionary had to say, sorry, God. <laughs> Oh, man, I'm saying for these guys in Africa, with these guys there, the way where they talked about, uh, this young boy talked about how many dead old people, grannies and grandpas, they had to take their corpses out there in the, in the underneath the ground, where do you call this? At the cellars, the bomb shelters underneath the buildings. Because no food, no water, and the old people, they are the first ones to perish. And, these kids that have had to see how step by step all these older people are dying and died, sitting with those corpses there. God must do a major miracle in their hearts, eh? 
in that in spite of all the trauma, God is going to do a major thing in their lives. Let it be so. Thank you, Father, for who you are, what you do. God, you're a God of miracles in the supernatural, and you can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we think or pray. And I pray, God, that you will just come and first of all help us to sort out our hearts so that when we don't understand, we will not throw our hearts into that rubbish of not understanding. But protect our hearts with your wisdom, Lord. Help us, guide us by your Spirit, how to deal with our hearts. We trust you for that. We honor you for that, that you will come and help us, Lord. Even as we partake in the communion right now, we take the breakthrough through the blood of Christ. Through the blood of Christ, clean. Let our hearts be washed clean, Lord. Please, please. God, that our lives will not be broken. Our hearts will not be uh, broken into pieces, but in brokenness. That we will come in humility and brokenness before you with a teachable heart. With a teachable heart. That you will change us. You will touch us in a very special, unique way. I pray that for every man, every woman here. If there's any despair, any anxiety, any negativity. God, that you will touch them. That they will banish that out of their lives. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we trust you for that. Hallelujah.